What I'm going to share with you now is how I made one of my favorite photographs titled B-25 Bomber Crew Plus One. What you're looking at now are some of the snapshots from location. This vintage B-25 bomber from World War II flew up to Eagle Field for a 50-year anniversary of the airport itself. The great advantage of being at this location was I was able to borrow somebody's dummy 500-pound bomb. There were several vintage Jeeps that were restored with Mach 50 caliber guns. The owner of this aircraft, Mike Pupich, bought it in 1972 and for all these years with a volunteer crew has kept it flying. You can see this is the restored cockpit from that aircraft. These are some of the volunteer crews themselves helping me move fake bombs, airplanes, and all these things into position. We're talking about lighting and angles. Here's two more of the crew themselves. These guys are actually in the photograph later on and were very helpful. On location you have to be pretty flexible. In this case I'm using a tow tug as the base for my tripod to get high enough up. I'm pretty limited in terms of all the toys and gadgets I can bring with me and budgets. These were all done with volunteers. As this, at this shot, as this shot shows, I'm looking through the camera toward the aircraft pretty much close to the final composition and this is the final composition here. This shot was done at, far after sunset but the long exposure makes it look brighter. I also underexpose to get that last little bit of twilight on the left side of the horizon which I will use later in the picture. Switching my camera color balance over to tungsten now, I'm exposing some of the ground and picking up some detail and texture. You can see the sky goes super blue because it's not balanced for tungsten. What you're looking at are separate various exposures I did of the aircraft itself. I am literally walking and crawling all over the aircraft to pick up different parts of it in terms of lighting. That streak you see in the frame is the head of the big flashlight moving across the photograph over about a 10 second exposure. It looks like a snake or a streak of lightning bolt. As I light from the left side, the right side, above and below it, I am conscious in my mind's eye of what I do want to create. I'm very conscious of trying to create a whole final homogeneous picture down the road when I put all these images back together so I'm not just white lighting willy-nilly, I am very aware of what I want to have happen. Of course what we want to have happen and what actually we get are not always the same thing. This last shot you're looking at here is of Douglas just lit from the front. When I light people I have to wind up doing about 50 to 60 exposures from different parts of their body to wind up getting what I do want later on. This first image again from the final composition it'll grow from this point forward. We're looking at about five or six or more layers in Photoshop to get what we see here. There's under the fuselage, under the engine, under the wing root. Every time I click the button, as I've mentioned before, you're looking at another five or ten layers in Photoshop to build up and layer these images back together. I have spoken before in previous videos that this technique is called painting with light. I'm mean, literally taking a 10 second exposure, opening the camera, and walking around with my flashlight and painting different areas of the aircraft. What I'm trying to really do is create sort of a character, almost a portrait of this aircraft and the environment, not so much a documentary snapshot. It's really hard to put words into what these images are doing. I love the phrase that David Bowie once used, talking about music with words is like trying to describe architecture through tap dancing. And to a small degree, using words now to talk about photography, it's difficult. Photographs are photographs. As you can see, every time I click the button and you see more layers, we're developing a, a fuller and richer understanding of the sort of story I'm trying to tell. In this case, the story is about the people who built the aircraft, the people who flew them, the people who to this day maintain and fly them. I think all of that is so beautiful and it's all done not because they get paid a lot of money but because they have a passion for what it is they're doing. Putting the sky back into the shot really adds a lot of depth. I think in this case it might be a little on the bright side but I could work on that later. Adding the background Jeep later on it adds a little more depth still far behind the wing so it's not just a black shadow. And I'm putting in the first couple guys now, one in the bombardier station and one guy underneath carrying a ammo box. This is Chad sitting in the driver's seat, and Emma, a mutt who happened to be at that party, I borrowed her to be in the photograph too. Lastly, Douglas, this is the first half of his photograph. You can see it looks very flat because he's only half lit, and the other half adds a lot of depth to it. The final photograph, 
you can see which is here it has a lot more richness and detail and character and texture than the original snapshot and it's interesting to look at this shot and look at this shot and realize it's basically the exact same thing virtually the only difference other than the inclusion of three guys and a dog is the lighting it's kinda of wild and I love that aspect this technique can be done with anybody with a digital camera and a tremendous amount of patience it's always fun to go back and look at the close-ups this is the guy inside the bombardier section if you look carefully you can actually see the rivets on the aircraft and the texture in the padding on the bulkhead behind this gentleman it's really wild this guy holding the ammo box, we had to actually borrow that jacket and use it between two or three different guys. We didn't have enough, you know, props and clothing for all this. This is all volunteers and people who just happened to show up. So we used the jacket several times. I love the detail of the lady painted on the side of the aircraft. Looks really wonderful. I just love the idea of having these guys, as opposed to having a lot of action and adventure and they're not jumping or hopping, they're just sitting and standing very static sometimes. The energy from the photograph comes not so much from their physical movement but more so from the scene and the lighting. And here's Emma the dog. We tried to shoot her four times. She kept moving around. It didn't work. Toward around midnight when she finally gave up we put her in the seat and she fell asleep. It worked great. This is a shot, an original photograph of the original crew uh, from Heavenly Body from I think 1944 or 45. It was wonderful. And that's how the photograph came about.